It looked like a supercar engine in the beginning and eventually became a limousine power plant. The famous W12 premiered in a mid-engine concept with a great design and amazing performance. The world knows it as a super complicated engine offering expensive service bills, terrifying fuel consumption and high cost. It is basically one of a kind model that only Volkswagen Group has been producing in various iterations. How does such a complex engine work and why did they build it? The 1990s were great times for Volkswagen as they were rolling solid cars with incredible engines. They were pushing the boundaries and technologies forward in diesel and gasoline engines together. Plenty of their engines had the five valve system, their diesels were the top class and when you think of a performance 90s Volkswagen, it was a VR6 powered sleep like family wagon. Volkswagen under Ferdinand Pierre was thriving and they were daring for even more. The original concept of a double 12 consists of three banks. Each row of cylinders had its own head, sharing a common crankshaft. One of the first production double 12s was an aircraft Napier Lion, being over a hundred years old now, but we could have seen such a motor on the 1990 F1 grid in the life racing engines team. In certain aspects, more compact than a regular V12, but Volkswagen was yet to disclose its notion of what a W12 should look like in the following years. As a grandson of Ferdinand Porsche, Pierre was an engineer and a visionary. He's the one to be thankful to when it comes to success of Volkswagen, and making and selling ordinary cars was not his only vision. He aimed to show the world things it could never see before like the Bugatti Veyron or the Volkswagen Phaeton, original targeted to rival an S-Class. An unimaginable thought back then, as Volkswagen never made anything like it. Though they needed a proper engine for it, and not just one. Pierre being Pierre, it had to be an interesting design. Besides an unprecedented diesel V10, which is hard to find a competitor to, a large petrol unit was a requirement in this segment. A 12-cylinder that they never had. There was nothing even in Audi stocks, but the 12 cylinder was not the first idea. Sketch in a Shinkansen, going from Tokyo to Nagoya, Pierre drew a potential double 18 on a piece of paper on a business trip. The rest is history. Bugatti received an 8 litre double 16, and the double 12 was shared amongst other Volkswagen Group companies. We didn't know whether they had other ideas, but the engine Volkswagen actually introduced was sourced from a 15 degree 2.8 litre VR6. The VR6 was a well packaged engine itself and pairing two side units would create a truly unprecedented engine layout. It had a cylinder offset, meaning that the cylinder rows are pushed away with an angle change from each other by 12.5 mm to prevent pistons at the bottom dead center to collide. It required 22 degree split crankshaft pins to even out the firing intervals. A concept of the double engine was engineered the same way, but originally designed as a 10 cylinder. While a 72 degree double 10 would not need split pins, as 720 divided by 10 is 72 degrees, the double 8 and double 12, which both relate to it, did. There are 60 degree intervals in a 12 cylinder, hence 60 minus 72 equals minus 12 degrees of a crank pin offset between the cylinder banks. This caused the crankshaft to be incredibly complex when looking at it, being 21 kilograms heavy and made of forged steel. Ultimately, the crank was hardly longer than a V8 one, achieving a compact external size comparable to Audi's 4.2 V8. It is amazing how they were able to achieve such a smooth run in an engine this complicated. During the development stage, the engine was shown in a Volkswagen Double 12 concept that had the same bore and stroke length as the 2.8. Apparently it was not enough as its bore was eventually increased from 81 to 84 mm. Compared to the cast iron VR6, the Alucil made double 12 was merely 20% heavier at 233 kg. Accommodating a clever layout of twin cams for two rows of cylinders per bank, there were 48 valves to breathe with 
and a relatively high compression ratio. Things like roller cam followers with a hydraulic valve adjustment and variable valve time were standard equipment. The complexity of the engine was even worse with accessories around it. The set of three timing chains was on the flywheel side. Many parts were in a pair, like secondary air injection pumps, throttle bodies, air filters and air mass meters. Furthermore, the intake was made of four-part magnesium castings. There were four exhaust headers with four primary cats and eight heated oxygen sensors. The concept came out in 1997 and the production engine emerged in 2001 in an Audi A8. Although it was a two-ton heavy sedan with the W12, it was quite agile, capable to cross the 100 km per mark from a standstill in 5.8 seconds. The Phaeton was only a bit slower with a 6.1 second time with a 300 kg weight ballast. The concept was a great halo car as the engine was packed in a unique automobile, however there are several factors against it as a sports car engine. Although the VR6 served as a performance engine, it suffers from unequal length intake and exhaust runners. Both elements affect torque and power and with unequal runners, each bank of cylinders basically makes a different power band. Besides, since part of the intake runners is inside the head, which warms up the air, it hurts volumetric efficiency even further. It is not easy to tune such an engine for performance, and a production port injected version was able to achieve 450 horsepower and 600 Nm of torque. Before that, the W12 Nardo was able to put down as much as 600 horsepower and in 2002, they managed to set a record at 24 hours of nardoring, covering 7,084 km at an average speed of 295 km per hour. And it did sound extremely good as well. The most naturally aspirated ponies a customer could get from this engine layout was a 500 horsepower output in a 6.3 liter Audi A8L. Besides Audi and Volkswagen, the W12 was a major power plant for Bentley, which only used twin turbocharged variants. These ranged from 560 to 710 horsepower with over 1000 Nm of torque. Naturally, later versions received a direct injection and even a cylinder deactivation system. The little brother, the W8, was only sold in a number of 11,000 units worldwide, but the bigger sibling received more applications and in the end reached more sales of 100,000 since the launch. It is currently still made by Bentley, but those few Volkswagen Touaregs and Phaetons equipped with W12 are something to remember forever. This engine layout allowed Volkswagen to put 12 cylinders in cars which otherwise could not carry a V12. The compactness is a major benefit, but the drawback like the performance and complexity issues are perhaps the reasons why nobody else dared to try. A great shout out to Volkswagen for this remarkable engine.